Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about dividend income versus rental income. We're actually going to go over a pros and cons list so we can see all the benefits and the disadvantages for each side. Now if by chance this is actually your first video with us, my name is Dennis and here on the channel we love talking about ways to save money, make money, and invest money like in this video here today. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tap on that bell. And before we get into this list, I actually want you to stick around through the entire video to see which one I think is going to be a better option. Now, quick spoiler alert, I think they're both gonna be amazing options to go with. And quick spoiler alert, I'm actually a fan of both options here. I'm actually trying to create both dividend income and rental income for the future. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the video. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with the cons on the dividend income side. Now, dividends are not a guarantee. Just because a company is currently paying a dividend doesn't mean they have to in the future. They can cut it entirely if they absolutely have to, want to, or whatever the case may be. Now, for a majority of companies, their goal is to actually help increase the dividends over time but again, that is not a guarantee. If something were to happen, they can actually completely remove it. And similarly to having your dividends cut, your dividends can also be lowered or not even raised at all. And the reason that's important to note is because over time, if dividends are not being raised or even get cut from companies, that means that your money is gonna be worth less every single year and it's not gonna have as big of an impact. So just keep that in mind when it comes to dividend investing. So the next con when it comes to dividend income is that the value of the stock itself can go into entirely down. Now, if we're talking about the overall market going up and down and you know having its influxes, that's not a big deal. And if anything, if it's down, it's probably a good time to buy more shares in a company you believe in. But sometimes companies can go out of business or something happens and their stock actually goes down quite significantly. And aside from the market overall going down, and that can have a huge impact on the principal amount that you have in your account. So the next con on the dividend income side is the fact that you're not going to have any control when it comes to how the business is running running. So if you are somebody that has certain criteria or has certain things that you want to make sure a company does, you're not going to have control over how it's being ran. Unless of course you have a ton of stock in that company, but that's going to be probably far and few in between. So overall, you're not going to have that control. And if that's something you like, you're not going to be able to do that here with dividend income. So I put this one as a con for dividend incomes because most dividends only pay out on a quarterly basis, semi-annual, and some of them even just on an annual basis. Now, if you're really good with managing your money, this won't be a big deal when it comes to having an income from dividends. But for some people, that might actually be really tough to only get paid out every quarter or every couple of months. Now, of course, if you are well diversified, you're going to have a lot of companies in your portfolio, which means you'll probably be getting paid out on different times from all these different companies, which would be great. But if we're talking about like just the individual companies, or if you are into like an ETF, just one ETF that only pays out quarterly, you're not going to actually see that income coming in that regularly. So moving on to the rental income cons, the first one here is going to be talking about tenants, because of course, as somebody who has a rental property, you're going to have to deal with people, which means you're going to have to find them, screen them, and then also deal with them. And I know some people might think, well, I can just get a property manager. And I kind of consider this a little bit of a con as well, because if you have to get a property manager, that means you're going to have to take a little bit less of a profit because now you're going to be paying somebody else to manage your properties. And again, this is not a big con it's just something to consider that you're going to have to be paying somebody to do a lot of these things if you don't want to have to take care of the screening the tenants and all those little things in between now another con on the rental income side is that of course you're going to have to be covering the maintenance the repairs and of course the mortgage if there's a mortgage on there now if not that's some great cash flow of course for you but overall you're going to be the one that's responsible for those expenses so you have to keep that in mind and of course if you have money set aside for these things it won't be as big of a deal but it is just something to consider and part of running a rental property now the next con on this one is paying higher taxes now i'm not saying you're going to pay higher taxes than a regular income, but you're gonna be paying more taxes than typically a dividend investor that's holding long-term. And the other side of having higher taxes and having everything run through, you're most likely gonna have to keep a lot of extra paperwork in comparison to dividend income. If you have all the different expenses, the repairs, anything that you're having to do as a business, because essentially having rental property is a business, you're gonna have to keep all those things. And that can be pretty tedious for some people, 
But again, if you pay a property manager, you can have that dealt with and you're gonna be paying a little bit more for that. So this one might not come as a complete shock, but having rental income means you have a property, which means that you have an asset that's not very liquid. And the only reason this is a con is if for some reason you had to have money pulled out, it might not be as easy to pull that money out. So whether you wanted to sell the house or pull out equity, it does take a little bit of time to go through that process. So just something to consider when going through these pros and cons. So before we go over the pros list, if you are getting some value out of this video, make sure you hit that like button down below and then also to let me know in the comments down below which one of these income sources are you trying to create dividend income or rental income or are you like me trying to create both let me know in the comments down below i love hearing from you guys so the first pro on the rental income side is going to be leverage you're going to have leverage when it comes to having your properties because you could either get a property without having to put the full amount down or if you have a property with actual equity in there you can pull that equity out to put it towards other future properties if you so wanted to so that leverage gives you a huge plus when it comes to rental income so unlike the dividend income like we talked about earlier with rental income you actually get a lot more control over your properties you get a lot more control over how things are being ran now of course there are limitations on certain things but overall you have a lot more control when it comes to how your business is ran with a rental property versus how businesses are ran with the dividend income so the next pro on the rental income side is that you will generally get higher roi on your money because of the fact that you don't have to put as much down like we talked about earlier with leverage you're going to see a lot more coming back in for you versus if you were to take whatever down payment you're going to have and have it just invested into dividends you essentially get a lot better roi than you do with dividends and that actually will equal out to the fact that you can actually build wealth a lot faster than you could with dividend income because of that leverage and because of that higher roi and if you're somebody that wants to build up wealth a lot quicker this might be a better option since you have a little bit more leverage over time and you also will have a generally higher roi now with dividend income we talked about how generally most of them will pay quarterly or even semi-annually well with rental income if you have a tenant in place you're going to be getting paid every single month and that is a huge plus because it is really nice to have a income coming in every single month and not having to wait so long in between so let's look at some of the pros when it comes to dividend incomes and the first one is the fact that you do pretty much nothing overall now granted you have to research the companies and sometimes you might have to keep up with how the companies are doing but overall you are not doing anything and you're getting paid for it so that is a pretty sweet deal and this definitely one of the reasons why some people really like having this type of passive income so the next pro on the dividend income side is that it is fairly easy to get started with dividend income so if you are somebody that wants to just kind of get the ball rolling this might be a great option for you because all you really have to do is pick a brokerage account pick a couple of different ETFs or stocks if you're into picking individual companies and you kind of get that ball rolling right away where rental income there's a lot more to it there's a lot of extra steps so earlier we talked about how with rental properties you generally will have a little bit of a higher tax and a lot more paperwork where with dividend income you actually generally will have a lower tax rate now of course this is depending on how long you hold the actual funds which is usually a year plus make sure you talk to a cpa on this stuff as well because i am not one and the other nice thing is too you don't have to worry about all that paperwork like you do with the rental properties because these different brokerage accounts will have all the paperwork that you need ready for you in february for tax time and on the income dividend side of course you also have the fact that your asset is liquid so if you are needing to pull money out for whatever reason whether it's a huge chunk or a small bit you can actually pull this money out in a relatively short amount of time now of course there is a little con to this depending on how the market's doing at the time so it might not be the best option now probably one of my favorite things when it comes to dividend income is how you can diversify your portfolio with rental income you have rental properties and sure you can do you know commercial properties as well but you're kind of limited in the sector that you're in versus actual dividend income you can be diversified in a plethora of different sectors you can be in the healthcare sector the energy sector you could even be in REITs as well which if you wanted to have rental income in a simpler format and be very diversified in the overall portfolio which is always a good 
thing. Now, if you stuck around, I mentioned that we're gonna talk about which one I think is going to be better. But as I mentioned earlier too, I'm personally going on both options when it comes to building up my passive income for the future because I'm not gonna limit myself to one option. I'm working on both. I'm trying to actually create something more for myself. And of course, with dividend income getting started slowly and for rental income, once I actually move into another place, we're gonna rent out our home here that we have and that's gonna create additional cash flow for us. Now, I think long-term that rental income is probably going to be just a slightly bit better because of the fact that you're gonna have a lot more leverage than you do when it comes to dividend income. And of course, that's not to say that dividend income is bad in any way. I just think long-term you're gonna have more advantages going the rental property side than the dividend side if you're only going one route. But if you're like me and doing both, I think regardless of the fact that you're going to be successful in your venture, as well as hopefully I will be successful in mine as well. So now I actually want you to click on this next video to keep on learning more about passive income. So that way you can create that future that you want without having to stress about money. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.